So the SAT is coming up and you're about to cry because no matter what you try, you just can't seem to understand any of the material. Don't worry, because in this video, I'm going to show you the things that got me a perfect score on the math section of the SAT. I remember when I took the PSAT, I was really unprepared. My math teacher did some review the past couple days and I went thinking I was ready, but in the test, there were so many topics that I didn't really know. I had to guess on a lot of my questions and in the end, I got a 600 in the math section. But after learning a few different tips, I took that 600 to an 800. For starters, this video isn't meant to teach you every single piece of information you have to know for the test. These are just the tips that I kept in mind to help me get those easy points and push me to that perfect score. First off, majority of the test revolves around math topics that you learn in school, such as algebra, quadratics, and etc. So if you're struggling in your school's math class with those basic topics, you're kinda cooked, but you'll still be able to get a lot of points. Before taking your SAT, do as many practice tests as you can. I actually did a total of like seven practice tests while studying for my SATs. Search up SAT practice tests on Google, click on the College Board website and download Blue Book to do your practice tests. These practice tests allow you to get really familiar with the format and timing of the SAT as well as what type of question slash wording the SAT likes to use. And when you finish the test, look at all the questions you got wrong or were hesitant about and really review how that answer would be solved. Don't just glance at it and be like, oh, I understand it now. Actually try to learn the different formulas and how they're used in each question. Sometimes their explanations are kind of bad or there might be an easier method than they chose. So I recommend going on YouTube and seeing how someone else went through that question. I suggest taking a note of a rule or a formula you don't know so you can remember it later on. I made a doc that was under a page with different math rules and equations that I found from doing practice tests and I made sure to review each bullet point frequently so I would remember it going into the test. Also for the people asking whether or not they should get an SAT tutor, I would say you don't really need one to get high scores since I never got a tutor personally, but I don't really know, maybe it could be a lot of help. Another tip that is kind of pretty obvious read the question very carefully. The SAT really wants to mess you up and confuse you, so make sure you understand the whole context of the problem and all the numbers and variables that are involved. I know you might be low on time and that you can't really think straight, but read the question carefully so you can get the easy questions right. Next, a big skill that you will need to have while solving questions is critical thinking. Most questions will involve equations and things you already know, but in ways you've never used them. Taking practice tests can really help you in understanding the different ways the SAT asks questions and how to use and derive equations to solve them. So be sure to do as many practice tests as you can. Another really important thing is to actually memorize all the different equations and rules that will be on the SAT. There definitely is a lot like the quadratic equations, the discriminant equation, the Pythagorean theorem, the circle equation. Triangles are also really a big part of the test, so remembering different rules for different triangles is really important, like the 30, 60, 90 triangle and its side lengths. Remembering what these rules and equations are and where to use them from practice tests is super important. One of the biggest reasons that I actually got that perfect score in math and the easiest way is because of Desmos. Realistically, I use Desmos for like most of my questions. Any question that really has to do with equations you can use Desmos. For example, if it's an equation about quadratics and you need to find X and it's an equation that you don't know how to factor, just plug it into Desmos and look at where the zeros are. If you have two equations and you need to find their intersection, just plug it into Desmos. If your question involves circles, you can plug that equation into Desmos. If you don't know whether adding or subtracting to X or Y makes it go up or down or right or left, just use Desmos. Even if you do know how to solve a problem, with Desmos you will be less likely to make mistakes and you would be able to solve problems much faster. Definitely use it as much as you can. Finally, the most important tip I have is to go to sleep early. If you are realizing that you're getting higher scores in your practice tests than your actual tests, it might be because you're really tired when you're taking the SAT in the morning. I remember taking one of my SATs with like five hours of sleep. And when I saw a question that I didn't know, I stared at it for like a couple minutes because I was so tired. I couldn't think straight. I think I got a lot of the easy questions wrong because I couldn't think at all. It's just really important to have that focus and energy to take apart each question and really think critically to figure out how to solve it. Just go to sleep as early as you can. Don't try to study really late. It won't really do much and it will hurt you more than help. And that's pretty much it. Go do some practice tests, memorize those equations, get some sleep, and you'll do great. Again, this video wasn't meant to teach you about the specific content in the SAT, 
but just the tips that I kept in mind to get me an 800 in the math section. If you want a more in-depth video about the specific content, I can make one in the future. I'll drop a video about the reading and writing section soon since I got a 770 in it, so subscribe if you want to see that.